The undersea landscape of Bikini Bottom is home to some of the greatest cartoon characters the world has ever known. From a certain absorbent sponge who lives in a pineapple under the sea, to his numerous nautical neighbors, SpongeBob and his continuously growing array of supporting characters have been entertaining viewers for years and years at this point, while you're probably unlikely to ever meet somebody who strongly dislikes characters like SpongeBob or even Mr. Krabs. Don't let that make you think for even a second that every single one of the show's characters is beloved. For a show that's been on the air for over two decades now, it should come as no surprise that there have been more than a few characters in the SpongeBob SquarePants franchise that have become infamous among fans. From the annoying to the mean, from the recurring faces to the simple one-offs, it's time to look at just some of the characters that we'd hope to not run into in an underwater excursion. I'm Kifinosi with Wicked Binge, and this is the worst SpongeBob SquarePants characters and why they suck. Up in fifth place, we begin our list of the worst characters with the one, the only, Squilliam Fancy Son. Squilliam is a rich snob in every sense of the word, beyond the fact that his last name is quite literally Fancy Son. Everything about Squilliam oozes a sense of egotism and superiority. While his rival Squidward works at a fast food restaurant, desperately trying to find a career in music, Squilliam lives a life of luxury and success that Squidward can only dream he will one day maybe obtain. Unsurprisingly, while Squidward is a fun and often relatable character, Squilliam is one of the more pompous and unlikable characters in the entire show, earning him this spot on the list. He's a total narcissist and is completely lacking in any sort of compassion toward the other characters in the show. Great job, SpongeBob. You even captured his smell. For as much of a stick in the mud as Squidward can be at times around SpongeBob and the others, at least he has his good-hearted moments. Even villainous characters like Plankton and the Flying Dutchman show that they have hearts on occasion. There aren't any moments like that when it comes to Squilliam, which just makes him even less likable as a character. He shows shows absolutely no sympathy, let alone empathy, toward any of the characters in the show, instead seeing their misfortune as the source of a good laugh. Though Squilliam can be a real jerk the majority of the time, we will admit that he has most definitely had his moments throughout the show's long history. At his best, he can serve as a type of antagonist you love to hate. Admittedly, that means he's still an unlikable character, but praise is praise at the end of the day. He also tends to get his comeuppance in most of the episodes he appears in. For all his bragging, Squilliam nearly always gets his just desserts, which makes most of his appearances surprisingly enjoyable by the end. Speaking of which, we cannot forget that it was he who kicked off the plot to the iconic episode that is Band Geeks. That's one thing Squilliam has going for him that nobody else on this list does, and it's enough to make him the best out of a rotten bunch. See, it looks like there is something Squilliam really is the best at after all. Fourth place brings us to SpongeBob's cousin Stanley S. Squarepants. The two things that separate Stanley from his ever so popular cousin are his height and more importantly, his clumsiness. Stanley has a tendency to destroy anything he touches? He's right. <laughs> I ruin everything I touch. It's the reason he stays with SpongeBob in his debut episode, and it's also where we take issue with his character. Whether it's SpongeBob's beloved spatula or some high-tech science equipment created by Sandy, if it can be destroyed, Stanley will find a way to do just that, no matter how crazy it may seem. Although the episode he appears in only runs for the standard 11 minutes, this one joke gets very grating very fast. Beyond that, there isn't really much to Stanley Stanley as a character, which we also see as a big problem. If this trait of his was more toned down and he was given a genuine personality instead, we'd probably look at him in a far better light. There does exist a brief moment in the episode where it's suggested that Stanley might be actually good at taking others' pictures, but nothing is ever done to follow up on that. Instead, this scene just serves to create more conflict between SpongeBob and Stanley, which is about as much depth as their relationship gets in the episode. Stanley's a one-note character in every sense of the term, and not a particularly funny one at that. Between an obnoxious personality quirk that is stretched to its breaking point, there isn't a lot that makes Stanley that compelling of a character, and that's why we place him here on our list. Perhaps future episodes could offer Stanley a chance at redemption, which would undoubtedly better his stance, but at the moment, this is one member of SpongeBob's extended family we could do without. Besides, he never even showed up to any of SpongeBob's birthday parties throughout the show. Some cousin. As we get to the top three, let's look at one of SpongeBob's most classic adversaries, Bubble Bass. Although this fish has appeared in numerous episodes over the show's run, and, and even managed to find his way into the Camp Coral spin-off series. It was his debut in Pickles that really gets him this spot on the list. Bubble Bass is your classic rude customer that anyone who's ever dealt with customer service will be more than familiar with. Forgot my gravy! This is a large part of why he gets such a high spot on this list. While not everyone has likely dealt with a rich snob nor a destructive cousin, we've all dealt with big-mouthed customers in one way or another. His main goal in his debut episode is to get as much free food as humanly possible by 
lying that SpongeBob was consistently getting his orders wrong. While that strategy does end up working for a while, causing the yellow sea sponge much trouble, later though, Bubble Bass is proven to be a liar, which causes him to run away like a coward. And don't think that he gets better in his later appearances, because he doesn't. In a far more recent episode, SpongeBob and Patrick are forced to help Bubble Bass move out of his home after he again lies, this time about being involved in an injury that made him unable to pack his belongings. Even after all this time, Bubble Bass is just as arrogant as he was when he first rolled into town. Besides being a serial liar and the worst type of customer, he's also just straight up rude to everyone on the show. He sees everyone as below him, giving him an ego that's just as giant as he is. He tosses Squidward around, calls SpongeBob a loser, and has no issue wasting everyone's time if it means that he gets the chance to kick back and laugh at someone else's expense. Undoubtedly one of the most mean-spirited and self-centered characters in the entire show, Bubble Bass is unlikable to his very core, and he's also one that pretty much every viewer has had some sort of experience with. If you think the customer really is always right, this guy is proof that that's not always the case. In second place, we have a character who is just as adorable as he is monstrous, Puffy Fluffy. Like Stanley, Puffy is another one-off character, a pet that's taken in by SpongeBob to keep Gary company while at work. Puffy Fluffy may seem cute and harmless at first, but when around other animals, he turns into a grotesque being that's capable of consuming anything and everything in his path. Despite being warned that this would happen before even getting the creature, SpongeBob decides to go along with getting the pet, of course, and anytime Gary is visibly afraid of him, SpongeBob believes Gary is the one who doesn't get along with Puffy rather than the other way around. To be completely honest, this, more than anything else, is the main issue with Puffy Fluffy as a character. It's not really his personality, or lack thereof, although that doesn't help, but the episode and its storyline as a whole is what makes this character one of the worst in the series to date. Even when both SpongeBob and Gary are about to be eaten by him, SpongeBob remains oblivious to the danger Puffy Fluffy represents, somehow, and continues to chastise Gary. Like, uh, as the episode draws to a close, Puffy escapes, but SpongeBob remains angry at Gary, and the two get to no sort of resolution for their conflict. It's quite a weird episode, especially since SpongeBob and Gary have had one of the healthier relationships in the whole show. Seeing them at odds all because of a misunderstanding is a rather weak plotline for an episode, and Puffy Fluffy unfortunately doesn't make it much better. While we will admit that his dual forms are a pretty interesting gimmick, the use of this character and the episode he made his sole appearance in force him near the very bottom of our list. Maybe in a better version of the episode, Puffy could have been one of the more intriguing villains the show's come up with. Sadly, this character is uninteresting at best, and at his worst, he's the second worst face to come out of Bikini Bottom. Last, and most certainly least, we give first place to Kevin C. Cucumber, the leader of a supposedly elite jellyfishing club known as the Jelly Spotters, and interestingly enough, the fourth character on our list to be portrayed by veteran voice actor D. Bradley Baker. What makes Kevin so bad as a character is how he feels like an amalgamation of all the worst traits of the prior entries. He has Squilliam's snobbiness, Bubble Bass's rudeness, Stanley's foolishness, and the list goes on and on. He is completely lacking in care toward anybody else, and that's even true of his own loyal fans. He has no problem sending them out into harm's way, and he repeatedly puts SpongeBob directly in the path of danger after SpongeBob proclaims that he's his biggest fan. From telling SpongeBob to punch himself in the face to getting him to jump off a tall building, there are no depths Kevin won't sink to if it means that he can get a laugh off of someone else's misery. And you want to know what makes it all worse? Despite his reputation as the king of all jellyfish enthusiasts, Kevin isn't even interested in jellyfishing. In his own words, he was only in it for the fashion. More than anything else, this really does prove how superficial of a person Kevin is. I was just in this for the fashion. He simply wants fame and power to feed his ego, even if he has to fake his way to getting it. Instead of finding friends and a hobby, he infiltrates something he has no interest in and then uses others to prop himself up. Not to give him too much credit here, but even Squilliam at least worked to get to where he is. As a result of all these combined elements, we've concluded that Kevin C. Cucumber is the clearest candidate for the worst SpongeBob character of all time. While Kevin may no longer be the leader of the Jelly Spotters, he can at least take solace in the fact that he has this claim to fame. In the word of one of his many anchovy followers, ouch. But let us know in the comments section if you agree with our ranking and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge more of our videos, but most importantly, stay wicked.